The observable universe has an area of about 90 billion light years. We can assume that the unobservable part of the universe might be much larger. The cosmos is so immense that the human mind simply can't comprehend it, at least not yet. However, some theories say it may turn out that the cosmos is much smaller than we think. How can that be? Welcome to the Hubble Channel. Today, we will try to guide you along the bridge connecting the macro and microcosm. Hubble. According to modern data, the observable part of the universe may have a diameter of about 20 trillion light years. Just imagine it. Based on the available data, we can assume that most of the outer space should be empty because there is no much matter in our part of the explored cosmos. Locking into space, we will see giant, boundless expanses of the icy void. But what if the universe fits in one atom? Sounds absurd? Don't be skeptical. This theory might not be all that incredible, though it's more like philosophical fiction. But first, answer a question. Do you remember what you know about matter? Any matter consists of the smallest particles, which are called atoms. These babies are the basis for the universe in the usual sense. Atoms are so small that we cannot really see them using even the strongest optical devices. In fact, we cannot even know with reasonable certainty what exactly an atom looks like. We can only assume this based on scientific theorizations. Although we cannot see atoms, it is considered proven that atoms consist of smaller subatomic particles, such as neutrons, protons, electrons and quarks. Nowadays, it's already known for certain that atoms are so numerous and small that the body of an average adult consists of approximately 7 octillion atoms. Let's remind that this figure can be represented as the digit 7 with 27 zeros. Just try to imagine this number. But an atom, in turn, also has its complex structure, and it allows us to think about the incredible theory of the micro-universe. What does an atom look like, so to say, from the inside? From your school chemistry course, you probably remember that an atom consists of a nucleus, which is formed from protons, neutrons and electrons moving around it. This model was proposed by Ernest Rutherford in 1911 and was called the planetary model of the atom. Indeed, you can see the analogy, because the movement of atoms around the nucleus is very similar to the movement of planets around the Sun. Moreover, this model hasn't been rebutted and is even confirmed by modern research, clarifying that the motion of electrons should be described by the laws of quantum mechanics and not classical. Is that to say that the smallest particle, the basis of matter, has a similar structure with neither more nor less the solar system? Could this be a simple coincidence due to the laws of physics? Or is this similarity something much more fantastic? We'll return to this issue in a minute. But for now, try to answer the question. How many electrons are there in our universe? The question sounds absurd, doesn't it? Neither the most powerful computer nor the human brain can handle such a number. But what if I told you that there's only one electron? The interpretation of one electron universe postulate was offered by the American physicist Richard Feynman, and it all sounds like pure fantasy. The hypothesis says that actually all the same electron moves in space and time so quickly that it seems to us that there are a great many of them. Just one particle gives shape to everything that we consider to be the whole universe. How about that? Of course, this theory didn't find many supporters. But what is funny due to the principle of the identity of electrons and the possibility to experimentally distinguish one electron from another, the theory cannot be refuted. How's that for a paradox? But let's go back to the structure of an atom and those incredible theories. Let's try to answer the question. What is the size of an object? 
Although the meaning of this word is domestic and familiar, actually the concept of size is rather mysterious and relative. For example, the world around us is adjusted to our size because it was built by us. But if we consider natural creations, everything is far from so simple. The mountains and planets are so huge for us that it is impossible to comprehend them. But we consider small ants as well as all microscopic life forms. But do ants consider themselves small? Do they understand that they live in the world of giants? It's unlikely that their world is as familiar to them as our world is familiar to us. Comparing with space objects, we're not even microscopic. We're talking about even smaller values. This idea makes our skin crawl, and no surprise why. No wonder the great master of horror and fantasy Howard Phillips Lovecraft in his works promoted the idea of the insignificance of humanity in front of the face of the endless space. And here we come to the main issue of our video. What if our universe can fit on the tip of a needle? What if the solar system is just an atom, one of the myriads of the same, which are part of some other matter? Based on this version, it's logical to assume that the atoms and particles that make up our world can also contain worlds inside. As one wise man said, the limit doesn't exist, does it? Yes, as a matter of fact. Our reality may indeed be at the subatomic level of the completely different reality. Likewise, other worlds can be located on our subatomic level. And so, ad infinitum, decreasing and increasing the scale. Sounds incredible. But we're here to explore the incredible. The most interesting is that looking at the known universe and observing the laws functioning there, we can easily come to the same conclusion. Everything starts with the smallest particles, like an atom, and ends with colossal celestial bodies and star clusters. Everything in our world, starting from your launch today to some recently discovered exoplanet, is made of the same building block. The dream of the scientific world is to find a theory of everything. The question of the ratio of the micro and macrocosm is the most important building block in this theory. By reconciling quantum mechanics and classical physics, generations of young scientists may be able to understand the true nature of our universe, and even what goes beyond it. After all, even according to one of the most popular versions of the origin of our universe, it all began as an infinitely dense and at the same time a small singularity. Later, the small points spread to all known limits. This is called the Big Bang Theory. A transformation from something small to something bigger. Do you also think that this is quite consistent with what we have talked about the micro and macro cousin today? Yes, but there is also an important note. A point is not equal to an atom. Despite its small size, the singularity that caused the Big Bang contained everything necessary to build the entire universe, and it's still impossible to say that it originated from one atom. There is also the so-called string theory, which is a great candidate as a theory of everything. The general idea of this incredibly complex theory, which has many interpretations, is that an atom is not the spherical object, whose shape and appearance we remember from school, but rather something like strings. The relationship between these vibrating strings includes almost everything known to science. The laws of classical physics, including gravity and quantum mechanics. But there are also weak points in string theory. It explains a lot, but begins to stumble. For example, on dark matter. In this case, string theory begins sagging. But say no to pessimism. Scientists have been struggling for a long time to integrate the theory of dark matter into string theory. At the end of 2018, Swedish scientists published a new version of string theory, according to which our universe exists on the edge of an ever-expanding bubble. This version brushes aside the four dimensions which are familiar to us, three spatial and one temporal dimension. And it invites us to consider our entire universe as just vibrations on the surface of this bubble. That what happens inside the bubble, or at the distance from it, remains a mystery. How about these prospects? 
We're just one small civilization, a point in a small piece of reality located on the surface of a bubble, which in turn can be a part of something much larger. Perhaps our whole world is just a proton or a quark, just a small particle of reality. Why don't we feel it in any way? Does the atom in your sunglasses feel like it's just the atom that makes up plastic? But is it so important to get an unambiguous answer to this question? Eventually we should only be grateful that our common huge home called the universe is full of such amazing secrets. Our task is to learn about these secrets, and we hope you enjoyed our video. Write your opinions in the comments, and don't forget to hit thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. See you next time on Hubble.